Hello, so welcome to this video on my uh, top 10 tips for working with JEdit and Topaz. So what I want to do in this video is just to run through the 10 things that I find most useful on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm working uh, with JEdit to set up input files for Topaz. So these are the 10 things that we're going to run through. So let's switch to my desktop and I've got a typical uh, read felt refinement input file here. First command that I find really useful is, let's use this file instead. The first thing I feel find really useful is um, command completion. Often when I'm working with Topaz, I can remember the, the basics of a command, but I can't remember the exact syntax. So for example, if I want to calculate bond distances and angles, I'll remember that the command is something like append bond lengths or append bond distances. If you start typing a keyword like append and hit control B on the keyboard, you get a list of all the possibilities. So if I click on the first one, it gets color-coded blue in JEdit, so we know it's a genuine Topaz command. The second useful thing is column editing. Often when you have a, a, a set of atomic sites in the structure, you want to change all of those sites simultaneously. So it might be in this example, we want to give all of them the same temperature factor. So we need to change all these lines at the end of the, the site uh, lines, all of these entries at the end of the site lines. So, what you can do in JEdit is hold down the control key and then highlight a whole series of text together. And then when you type, whatever you type gets written in all of those lines. It's a really quick way of working. You might find as well that you need to set up parameter names for your fractional atomic coordinates. So you might want to give each of the X, Y, and Z coordinates a specific name. So again, to give them a sensible name, I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to copy the list of site names and then again, hold down control on my keyboard and select a column in the file and type X control V. And now I've got a set of sensible parameter names for all of the X coordinates. So you'll find that very, very useful. Uh, another command that's useful is a command called folding. Often when you've got a complex input file, you might want to hide large chunks of it away so you don't have to look at it. And there's a little uh, JEdit syntax where if you put a quotation mark, so it's a JEdit comment and then three curly brackets at the start of a set of text and then three closing brackets at the end little j edit fold appears here and if you click this arrow you can hide away the text that you don't want to look at and you can give it a label at site coordinates so that can be a very useful way of working obviously with simple files you don't need it but let me show you a more complex uh, root belt refinement file this is a Reetvelt refinement file for uh, refining th against six banks of data simultaneously on the time of flight neutron spectrometer. If I show, show you the, um, the full um, input file, you can see this is a, a long and complicated input file, but I've deliberately put folds on it. So if I view this in folded mode, you can see it's a very simple file where the information for the first bank of diffraction data here, the second bank is here, and the third bank is here. And if I want to look at an individual bank, I just can just click on it and expand the part of the text file that I'm interested in. So an input file that's thousands of lines long, you can condense into six or seven key lines that you want to look at. Okay, with uh, complicated input files like this, you might want to be looking through, and for example, in a file like this, this line here describes the, the peak shape in each of the banks. I might be interested in the peak shape parameters in all of these banks, and I want to, might want to look at them all simultaneously. So there's a little hyper search function in JEdit. If I highlight any piece of text in the input file and I type Alt full stop on the keyboard, I get a little hyper text window pop up, and that lists at the bottom all of the places in the file where I've got this particular line entered. So I can see the, the peak shape for bank one, bank two, bank three, and bank four. If you want to look at one of them, just double click on it and you jump to that part of your input file. The alt full stop is a really quick way of working. The other thing that's uh, really useful when you're looking at complicated files is using the split screen feature in JEdit. Let's say I want to look at the information for bank three and bank four simultaneously. If I click on this little split screen icon in JEdit here, I can see the same file in two different places on my screen on the left. So here's the information for the peak shape in bank three, and here it is in bank four. So the split screen editing can be a really convenient way of working. Okay, let's go back to the full screen by clicking on this icon here. 
Uh, I mentioned that column editing was a really, really useful feature. Quite often when you're actually doing a refelt refinement, you'll start off with your atomic sites all nicely aligned, but then when you refine parameters and you turn them on and off, you'll often find that your nicely aligned file beca becomes um, misaligned. So the site coordinates here for the yttrium and the oxygen atom, they've all become slightly misaligned in JEDIT. If I wanted to change all the temperature factors, it's not easy for me to highlight a column and change everything uh, simultaneously. But again, there's a little trick in JEdit. There's a JEdit macro. If I highlight those sites, I go to macros, spaces align, provided you've got the same number of entries on each line, they'll get miraculously um, realigned for you. So now I can um, do the column editing and change all of their temperature factors to the same number. Okay, so that space is aligned. Our next important tip, um, if you remember the, the JEdit menus, the, the way that JEdit menus work is I can just come to my menus and I can just click on items. Um, so for example, if I want to view the structure, I can just click on this view structure menu here and the text appears in JEdit. The most common email I get from people is that their uh, JEdit menus have failed and instead of getting these nice topaz lines they get um, some kind of computer garbage entered into their input files what's nearly always happened is this little text box box in the bottom le left execute scripts if you've accidentally ticked that off if you click on a command you don't get the command installed you get the underlying um, jedit function that's doing that work for you so if that happens just click on execute scripts delete the junk try again and you should get the, the right command back. Okay, um, on the JEdit menus, uh, again, people often ask me, um, they say there's a series of menus that are set that I've set up for the things that we do most commonly in Durham. Is it possible to set up your own menus in JEdit? It turns out that's very, very easy to do. Um, if you go to the Topaz Your Local, I set up some blank menus that you can edit yourself. So if you want to look at those menus and change them, uh, it's quite a straightforward thing to, to do. All of the information for these menus is stored in your local JEdit settings folder. So if I go here to Utilities, Settings Directory, and I navigate to my JEdit Settings folder, um, JEdit has got a little file browser built into it, which works just like the file a browser that's part of Windows, but it lets us work directly with the files that we're interested in. So all of the menus are actually stored in a little subfolder called X insert. And if you expand that folder, you can see that all of my menus are here as small XML files. Let's go to the XML file called your local insert. And let's just double click to open that in JEdit. And you can see that's just a, a XML file with some simple text, which creates some menus. So for example, this menu called Topaz Your Local, we could just change its name to uh, My Local Commands. And now if I save that file with the, uh, the Save button, if I click on this Refresh menu in um, the X insert, you'll see that now My Local, the menu has been renamed My Local Commands. So for example, you might want to set up your diffractometer and so in the miscellaneous menu, there's a command called your diffractometer. And you can see what that does. It's just this text here on the screen. So I could set this up to be John's diffractometer. I won't put a quotation mark in just in case it messes things up. So it might be that my diffractometer in the lab uh, is set up with a monochromator angle of 26.6, uh, 26.6 six degrees and it might give me copper k alpha radiation now again if i save that file and i look at my menus on the left by refreshing them that command has now been john's diffractometer if i go to a new window i save it as temp.imp and as soon as i click on that command get the appropriate text in my input file. So you can modify these menus very, very easily. Okay, uh, the next thing is macros. Um, a lot of the power of 
uh, Jed, it comes from uh, its built-in macros. Now these are different to Topaz macros, but there are a series of little scripts that are set up in Jed that let it do certain functions. So for example, the, um, the macro that we ran earlier called um, Spaces Align is actually a built-in macro, a macro that we've built into Jade it. Things like the macro TA run is what happens uh, to launch Jade it. So in fact, when you click this button here on your um, on your uh, bar at the top of Jade it, what it's actually doing is it's running a macro called TA run. So if, for example, I can go to macros TA run here, and that will actually launch JEdit uh, on my computer. It actually launches on a different screen on my computer. So you can change those macros to whatever you want. Again, if we go to utilities, settings directory, we can look in the macros folder and all of those commands are stored in the macros folder. So for example, the TA run macro is here. And if I double click on it, you can see that what it's doing is it's finding the directory for Topaz Academic, and then it's executing that program. So you can change these things uh, to install other pieces of software or run different pieces of software. For example, um, some people use a different routine for reading a SIF file into Topaz. The default routine is here, it's called TA insert SIF dot bash. And the actual work is done on this right line here. When you click on that button, what happens is it runs a program called SIF one dot XE on temporary file. Uh, if you've got a different program that you want to use to uh, ins to process your SIF files, then you can just change the name of this text here. It's very quick to set up your own macros for working with Topaz. And then the last thing that uh, we could look at is color schemes. If you remember one of the uh, nice features about Topaz and uh, JEdit is that we've taught JEdit to color code Topaz input files so that they have sensible um, colors to them. So you can very easily see a Topaz keyword because it's colored in dark blue. You can see a mathematical function because it's colored in pale blue and numbers get colored in red. It may be that you don't like the default color scheme, but it turns out again, that's very easy to change. Again, it's stored in your um, JEdit settings directory. If we go into a folder called modes here, there's a file called impmode.xml. And if I double click on that file, it contains all of the information for color coding Topaz keywords. So for example, um, a word like amorphous area is a Topaz keyword. And so it's given this little flag keyword one slash keyword one. And that tells JEdit that that's a, a word that needs to be color coded. So you can add your own phrases in here if you want them color coded. And then to change the actual colors, you go to what's called the schemes directory. If I go into schemes and I click on imp jedit scheme, here you've got a, a file which actually contains the information on how to color code things. So something that's uh, a keyword, for example, keyword three in Topaz is a mathematical function that gets given this color here, which is a nice pale blue color, and it gets written in a bold, Format on the screen so you can see it. So any of these colors you can you can change and set them up exactly how you like. So hopefully those um, top 10 tips in JEdit will, will give you some ideas on how to get started and how to work quickly and efficiently with JEdit and Topaz. I hope the video has been useful.